In a small workshop in Pakistan, something remarkable is happening. A dead battery, one that most people would simply throw away, is about to be brought back to life. The process begins by dismantling the old battery and carefully removing everything inside. The plates are not discarded, instead they're separated, laid out under the hot sun, and once dry, thoroughly washed clean. The broken electrode legs are rebuilt by pouring molten aluminum onto each terminal end, restoring their strength and conductivity. Now comes the reassembly. Positive plates, negative plates, and separators are stacked in alternating order. The separators, made from porous materials like rubber, fiberglass, or polyethylene, keep the plates from short-circuiting while still allowing ions to flow freely. Each stack of plates and separators forms what's called a cell. The positive plates are connected together with molten aluminum, and the negative plates are joined in the same way. This ensures each cell has both a strong positive and negative terminal. One by one, all the cells are placed back into the battery casing. The terminals between the cells are linked together, six cells in total, each producing about two volts. When combined, they generate the familiar 12-volt output. The case is sealed again, secured tightly with hot adhesive to prevent any leaks. The main positive and negative terminals are recast with aluminum, ensuring durability and a solid connection. Finally, the battery is filled with fresh electrolyte solution. To complete the process, an electric current is applied. Suddenly, sparks crackle at the terminals, a clear sign that the once dead battery has been revived. No magic, no million dollar machines, just skill, molten aluminum, and a little workshop in Pakistan. Who needs Tesla's Gigafactory when you've got Uncle Rafiq's backyard battery lab?